Radio for the masses. Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. If the game is rigged, change the game. Game changer. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. This is Fade to Black with your host, Jimmy Church, on the Game Changer Radio Network. All right, good evening, Fade to Black for Monday, May 29th, 2023. I am your host, Jimmy Church. Happy Monday, everybody. I hope you had a great weekend, Memorial Weekend. Uh, We are back, and tonight's guest, Denise Stoner, is with us. We're going to be talking about... A subject that I don't think gets as much coverage as it deserves, and that is alien abductions, 20 years of research, and the impact on experiencers. We're going to be going through all of that tonight with Denise. She is MUFON's Assistant Director of Abduction Studies and Florida MUFON Field Investigator, Florida Star Team Member, and Director of the Florida Research Group Affiliation of U4COP. That's right, U-F-O-R-COP, U4COP. She also holds educational forms for public and private gatherings for abduction experiencers. For 12 years, she did back Background investigations for the military on recruits seeking highly classified clearances for work on nuclear submarines. Prior to retirement, she moved to the Naval Air uh, Naval Air Warfare Center Training Systems Division Military Research Facility, where she was training the coordinator for several hundred military and civilian employees. I would like to welcome for the first time to Fade to Black, and I will say it's about time. Denise Stoner. There she is right there. How you doing, Denise? Hi, I'm fine. How are you? Thank you for having me. It's, uh, it's, it, I don't know why we waited uh, this long, <laughs> but uh, you're here with us. I've had your partner on many times, uh, Kathleen Martin. And, oh, yes. And everybody knows my love and affection for Kathleen. And Chuck <laughs> is watching right now. So hello, Kathleen. And yeah. Now, uh, before we get started uh, tonight, Denise, you get the first time guest disclaimer, which is this. Denise, it's just you and I just sitting on my couch having a conversation as friends. And where that conversation starts, it starts. Where it ends, it ends. But we're going to end as friends. There you go. You ready? I'm ready. Okay. One more time. Hi, Kathleen. I know you're watching. <laughs> I bet she is. <laughs> you're watching. You know, the other night, uh, I'm actually going to start here. Uh, this crazy thing happened, and I thought um, that that I had seen every documentary on UFOs ever made, right? Okay, it's, it's what I do. I love it. So I'm sitting uh, uh, in bed after the show, and I'm goofing around, and there's Betty and Barney Hill. And I went, what? <laughs> That's right. And that documentary came out in 2022, last year. Yeah. And and I watched it, a beginning, excellent documentary, but there's Kathleen, right? That's right. <laughs> and uh, and uh, what uh, reminded me, uh, knowing that you were going to be on the show, too, that's a strange coincidence, I might add. Um, Here is, as I'm watching uh, the documentary, I'm reminded of uh, abductions don't seem to have the conversation that they used to have. And what do you think is actually going on there? You know, if if you go back to, of course, Betty and Barney Hill, right? Right. And you've got Travis Walton, you've got Calvin Parker and, and the, you know, Betty Andreessen and, and, and others. And then, um, not, not much, right, since then, but there is a lot of contact experiences. Are the abductions happening still as frequently but differently? Why don't we hear about them as much anymore? Well, we're doing research on that, and we think it should be worded differently. And how? Something to do with the consciousness of all of us. Um, more people who had claimed to be abducted 
also had near-death experiences. They also claimed to have been in a place and time that was nothing like going through the tunnel and all of a sudden you're on green grass and flowering fields. It's not like that. They're claiming something different. And then I've started to ask, what did you see there? Some people have seen their ET, their gray, the one that escorted them to the craft. And could there be, I just want your thoughts on this, um, that in years past, E.T. had a easier time of, of just getting here and abducting, right? <laughs> because we didn't know much about what was going on. Today, we have the technology, uh, you know, satellites and radar and, and ways of detecting. And, and now they don't have the free reign that they used to enjoy before. Do you think that's part of it? That may be part of it, but I also think of it as their technology advancing. Of course, they're way, way farther ahead than we are. Sure. And so they are taking us out of body rather than taking the body itself. In, oh, I see where you're going with this. I see where you're going with this. Yeah. Okay. Let's actually stay right there. I, I find that really interesting. And one of the reasons for that is, of course, we still have, you know, metallic craft, you know, yeah. you know uh, but we have a lot more uh, interdimensional um, interaction that is going on with the craft where they may not necessarily be as physical as they used to be. And and you're saying that that's probably what's going on with the abductions. I think that's got a great deal to do with it, yes. Um, and I experienced something similar to that back when my husband and I were taken out of the high desert in Colorado where orbs appeared and a blue beam appeared. And then I felt like I had been totally scattered. I couldn't see myself. I didn't know who or where I was. And then all of a sudden I was whole again and standing inside the craft. Uh, can we talk about that? For, let's back. Hold on. Let's not get ahead of our skis here. <laughs> you, can't, <laughs> you can't just drop that and move on. Okay. All right. So what, what happened? And, and you were with your husband. Yes. Um, coming down across a high desert, a place called South Park, Colorado. It was a flat high glacier high desert area and we always drove to meet my parents at our campground we both had mobile homes there and went for dinner got there before dark we came down off the first pass and i was watching lights out in the desert and then i watched them over the roof of the car and then i watched the car lift and it went off to the high desert there was nothing out there and when it landed it was a really unusual shape shape of an hourglass or two dishes inverted uh, with the two bottoms touching and light spinning around. And then that's all I remembered until we ended up over by the Collegiate Peaks on Trout Creek Pass, headed for Buena Vista, and it was pitch dark. Many hours had passed. We had set the odometer. It hadn't moved. And we wondered, okay, what, what happened? We were afraid, kind of disoriented, and we decided to move on and head for the camp. When we got there, my parents and friends were walking down the road. Of course, this was 1982, no cell phones. Mm -hmm. They were going to use the uh, campground phone to try and find out if we'd been in a hospital, abducted. <laughs> whatever, abducted. Right. And so they saw the headlights of our car coming down the road, down the dirt road. And um, my dad worked in aerospace. So he just said, what happened? I said, we don't know. He would leave it at that um, because he had a clearance where he worked. My mom had to know everything. So she just kept, come on, you have to know. Where were you? What went on? Tell me about it. We really didn't speak about it after that, uh, getting settled in, having dinner. And I kept saying, I wonder if we were taken um, didn't expect it. And then it took myself calling a doctor who became a very good friend and hypnotist. And we discovered what had happened, but it stayed there. We moved to Colorado or to Florida in 1985. And it wasn't until I met Kathleen 
Um, and she became my hypnotist and investigator. And we discovered and prowled through the craft. And, yeah. You know, what, what, does, what does your husband think? And, and did you do, there's a scene um, that I love, uh, the interaction between Betty and Barney. Uh-huh. When um, uh, Betty's, you know, they're driving away and she says to him, okay, you believe in this crap now, right? <laughs> and and it, 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 what did you and your husband have a conversation like that after after the experience? Uh, kind of. We didn't say too much about it until he actually met Kathy and she put him under hypnosis. Right. And he allowed it to go to the point where we think he was on the craft also. And then he stopped it. He, he didn't want to see the entities. I think that's what he was feeling. Good call. Good call. I'm, I'm with your husband on that one. <laughs> I'm with your husband. Um, okay. So now again, uh, without getting too far ahead of our skis, let's back up for a second because 1982, you, you, you have a high security job, right? right. You, you have a different mindset. I'm assuming about life and something like this happens uh, are you buying into it because of of the way you you need to think and 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 you know live? Um, well, I was taken when I was two and a half years old, when my mom was in the hospital giving birth to my sister. So I remembered the little entity that came for me, and I thought he just took me somewhere to play. So I knew something had gone on. I knew it had occurred. I wasn't sure. At that time, we were in Colorado, and I worked for National Park Service, and it was a security situation because we were doing the planning, design, and construction of the first national park of Saudi Arabia called the Asir. So um, working for that Department of Interior, they were more accepting of things like that. I could talk to my coworkers, and they might not believe what I said, but they listened. Uh, what do you okay how do you how do you how do you start that conversation i mean i i i try i don't know you know when i meet somebody new or i've got somebody around me that i've never talked about this stuff before you got you kind of got to throw softball pitches right under arm slow pitch right it's yeah. how do you do that with a co-worker well it was like family Uh, National Park Service was all like family. We were all friends. We all spent time together outside of work. So we would be sitting having a drink after work out on Sims Landing is a place we went. We could look out over the mountains and then the conversation would come up. Oh, look at that. It's getting dark. Um, Have you ever seen anything unusual come over the mountains that you couldn't explain? Just that's what I did. Little stuff, right? Little, little stuff. <laughs> yeah. And 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 what were their answers? I mean, it, I think we all see stuff in the sky. Did anything surprise you? Uh, mm, no, no. At that point, nothing surprised me. Nothing bothered me. Um, I had been working by then with that uh, with Doctor Romek, uh-huh. um, going out to visit homes that were haunted. But the people had also been abducted. So we were running into a combination of things. And and I was real careful how I spoke about that because then they would just tease me. My coworkers like, oh, yeah, pick up a ghost or two and hop on one of those flying things, you know. (laughs) Well, everything is connected, though. It is. You know, everything is connected. And uh, you brought up consciousness um, in the beginning. And so let's yeah. circle back to that. Uh, sure. we can, because everything is connected. But when we, you and I tonight discuss consciousness, how do you approach it? Is consciousness um, physical? Is it part of us? Or is it something that exists in the non-physical on the outside of us? Oh, boy. And that's complicated, too. I can give you an example of a near-death experience. I didn't go through a tunnel. I, I, I ended up in a situation where I felt I was a part of a living thing, but I couldn't see it. Right. I had all these little electric sparkly things around me. I felt a part of it. I could see 360. 
I didn't have to turn around, but then I said, where am I? What, what am I supposed to look for? I don't know who I am. And when I said that, they said, oh, you can separate out. Just think it. And I saw an outline of head, hands, legs, a torso, but no real features. But then I felt me again. And they said, see, and now you're a part of the whole. And I went back to whatever that was. I still don't know. How, how did you go back? I Oh, back to my body? Yeah. My, a voice, a male voice said, um, you can't come with us just now. You can't come with us. I was observing some beautiful purple lights way off in the distance. And I said, no, I want to go there. And they said, oh, no, that's going to be some time. You can't go there. You have to go back. And I started to resist. I just thought, I'll fight this. And I felt two hands on the back of my shoulders push me. And I tumbled over and over and over into the room where I was recovering from surgery. And my mouth opened and I entered through my mouth, then spun around and I woke up fighting just like I was when I entered. Wow, that's interesting. My, my, um, <clears throat> Uh, I, 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 I can't really classify it as an NDE because at the time I didn't know. I didn't find out for a week or two while I was still in the hospital mm -hmm. that uh, I had four uh, situations. I, I, was, I was unconscious uh, oh. uh, for four days when I first oh. admitted to the hospital. Well, that's neither here nor there. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm fine today, right? But, but I right. was really sick. And I didn't find out till later. But here's here's the trippy thing. I didn't want to come back. <laughs> I was yes. there for four days, and it was glorious. Oh. Um, and it reminded me a little bit of what you just said about beating, seeing in 360. Uh -huh. Because I was I was in, in blackness. Uh, yep. Very hard to explain, but it was all black. But I could sense that 360 thing, and I've talked about it before on the show. But here, I when I came back, I just opened my eyes, right? Bing, and I went, where am I? If I was uh -huh. first thing, I didn't know. I was in the hospital. Yeah. Um, but the second thing was, I was like, Dorothy. I was like, man, <laughs> I want to go back. And I closed <laughs> my eyes. Yes. It was, uh, it was just a very interesting experience. I had no idea. I didn't know where I was. Um, but I liked it. Yeah, that's that's the only way that I can explain it. That doesn't mean I want to, you know, just off right. myself today. And um, no, no, it, it wasn't no. that good. <laughs> but <laughs> not now. But yeah, but yeah. it was uh, it was interesting. The three sixty yes. awareness. Um, I definitely went through that. Total awareness, and I completely changed personality, handwriting, uh, everything was different, and people would say to my husband, because I was in ICU, so they couldn't all come in, and then when they did, they went out, where's Denise? That's not her. Well, it, you know, I can, I can step a little deeper and say, I had gone back and taken the personality I was in my past life, the life before this one. I liked me better. Ah. I liked me better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we like you just fine today, though. So don't change. Oh. Um, uh, now, are we are we suggesting here um, that where science and physics and quantum physics are today? The multiverse, parallel worlds, uh, interdimensional, extra dimensions, all of those things that science is trying to teach us and make us aware of, that E.T. being more advanced than us totally understands these concepts, and that is what is happening. They're coming into us um, and into our world from, you know, an interdimensional aspect. I believe so. Uh, Kathleen, myself, and a psychologist friend of ours uh, are working with an individual who, I guess they speak through him, 
the Council of Eight. We have felt them in the room with us. We have seen them. I have used instruments uh, to detect temperature that changes, a variety of different things, and they claim they are from another dimension, and I believe them. Now, uh, Kathleen and I have talked about this before, right? Uh -huh. Where uh, you guys have, you, you guys do this, and you do have sensors and instrumentation that is live in the room. Yes, so you know when something is coming and going, right? What 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 are what are some of these devices? Well, basically, a laser thermometer is real important because I take a reading of the room first. Okay, and we have had several degrees, I can't remember if it's six or seven, raise in temperature um, and then lowered back down when this gentleman begins to channel. You can see it. And then sometimes he becomes so overheated, depending on which individual is speaking through him, that when he comes out, he is soaked, just saturated. He's gotten a little more used to it and he's not doing that quite as much, but the temperature in the room still changes and we can feel, Kathleen felt it, I did, mm -hmm. and so didn't our, our friend. Um, static electricity is the best way to put it. Um, I don't know how else to describe it. We're raising our level of, of what we can see, hear, and feel. Were you, um, uh, uh, refresh my memory, were you with Kathleen when she was driving home after a conference and something strange happened. Yeah. She I was, was. With you, right? Yes. And she, her, her she, dad was in the back seat. Right, 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 right. Okay. Um, Kathleen, I'm going to get Denise's version of this story now. <laughs> Um, th this, this was a remarkable, uh, uh, situation and, uh, you guys were in Florida and, right. and whose house were you driving to first? Kathleen's or your car was somewhere else or was yes. my car. I pulled over in between where she lived and where we were going, which was Tampa. And I parked at a, was a Target or a Kmart or one of those and, left my car there. We had done it before. She picked me up and we went to the conference, uh, to the meeting. And then on the way back, her dad didn't want to miss a trick. He did not want to lose conversation. So we were all talking, all chatting. She was driving. And all of a sudden I looked over my shoulder and I said, Kathy, your dad's gone sound asleep in the middle of a conversation. And she said, oh, so I looked a little closer and I said, I guess he's all right. Um, and then her car, we were headed onto a highway, felt like the nose of the car was going up in the air. Her navigation went wacko. <laughs> and uh, so she pulled off. Uh, we knew where we were going at that point and could get home. So um, she looked, checked everything out, thought, okay, it's all right. We're going back. We made it to where my car was. I wore an insulin pump and I had my cell phone and I had my car there and I was going to call my husband. My phone was dead. My insulin pump, I checked before I left. The battery had died on that. My adjustable mirrors, gone. Um, several things, the radio in the car, everything quit except for the engine and the headlights. So I used her phone to call my husband. She headed home. I thought, I'm going to take a shortcut. I'm tired. It's late. And there's lots of traffic. It was a holiday of some kind. And so I took the shortcut. And then all of a sudden, I didn't know where I was. And I looked around, and I was in a driveway that sloped down in a, in a half circle. I was at the bottom of it. Anybody on the road, they wouldn't have seen me. And there was an ET peeking up from behind a tree. Then I saw a big globe that was entering or exiting the lake. I don't remember which. I have to be honest there. Kathy would remember. <laughs> and uh, I got home and something was just really wrong. And I called her and I said, look, I got home late and I shouldn't have. And I had told my husband not to worry when I used her phone, so he didn't. If I tell him, he's not gonna worry. <laughs> she said, can you come back over tomorrow? 
And I arranged, was a day or two, I went over and she came out with a trimeter that mm -hmm. measures, you know, the electric and magnetic, etc. And my car, it zeroed out, the needle went. She said, let me try something. I've never done it before. She took it inside, took a base reading, and then she set it and said, come and walk up to it. I couldn't get within 10 feet of it. It spiked the needle on that trimeter. So we tested her and her husband. She sets it off. I brought it home, tested with my husband, nothing, nothing, myself, bing. <laughs> so we've discovered that abduction can cause that needle to spike with individuals that have been in certain circumstances with those crafts. Do you think, um, I, I know this is kind of a loaded question, but do you think that they knew who they were interacting with. I'm talking about you and Kathleen. And of course now, now her dad is, is, is party to this now too, as well. I, I talked right. to Kathleen about that, <laughs> um, but you, you know what I mean? It, yes. just, it doesn't sound too random. Does it? No, it doesn't. Um, because of the way that Kathy and I met, um, she moved to Florida. We find out that my dad was born in New Hampshire so I went there a lot. I had other relatives there. Um, and then she lived in Crested Butte, Colorado, was just down the road from us, one way in and one way out, when we lived in Gunnison. And we probably saw the same craft in broad daylight on the same day. We may have been taken there, and that's going way back to the 70s, but we hadn't met yet. Interesting. Uh-huh. Have yeah. you, um, uh, this, this has been coming up a lot lately, um, a, a negative experience versus a positive I I experience. And, you know, you get two experiencers together that have had different experiences. They're going to argue about this. Yes. You know, one's going to say, hey, um, I, I, they're okay. They're here to help us. And then you have others out there like, screw that. <laughs> right? true. I, I had a very bad, no, I never want to go through that again. Yeah. Why, why the different, is it, is it just different ET, you know, races and species that, that are visiting us? Why is one abduction experience a positive one? And why is, you know, why are others so negative? I think it's good guys and bad guys, just like we have. Um, and if you stop and think that these entities, how would they know our alphabet? How would they know our number system? How would they know, you know, just speaking to them, they might not understand our language. Um, and they had a task to complete, and they did. Now, I think I agreed to this. I think I signed something that said, this is what you're going to do. Um, and I'm okay with it. And I have an escort, my ET. Um, he's my companion on the craft. He gave me some tours that were fascinating um, to see the core of the ship that was just highly emotional for me. Um, I don't like a certain race. I had one in my bedroom and I just went, uh-uh, no, <laughs> I'm not going with you. I think I was taken once and that was it. They gave up on me. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think there's a lot involved here. What, what, would, um, what would you call negative? You know, what, how do we define a negative experience? I think cruelty and harm when mm. there's no attempt made to cause that person to, to be all right with it, to ease up with it. Um, mine would touch my forehead, took away fear and pain. It was gone. Um, I was afraid when they came to get me and took me to the craft, if I was aware of it, which I was some of the time. But other than that, mm, no Fascinating, okay. fascinating, and not to go back to Betty and Barney Hill, uh, but um, I, there are similarities um, with uh, Betty Andreessen, Betty and Barney Hill, yeah. uh, Calvin Parker, and certainly Travis Walton. Yes. In that, um, uh, now Whitley 
uh, it's got a, a, a different, different take on things. Um, and I respect everybody, right? Everybody's yeah. had their own experiences. Now, I never interviewed Betty and Barney, obviously. Um, I've certainly talked to Kathleen about it enough, and I've read the, the yeah. books and, and stuff. Anyway, um, oh, I've got a strange interrupted journey story. Um, I'll circle back. Uh, okay. okay, so, but if we look at everything as a whole, when Betty and Barney were driving back home, they weren't freaked out. Right. No. They were, they, what, 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 hear me out, though. Yeah. Okay. Compared to their reactions during hypnosis and the regression, uh. that was pain. That was fear. That was that was just it was, it was it's hard to listen to. Yeah. Uh, and and it's also hard to read. But after the experience itself, um, I think that it wasn't a negative experience until. Um, they had the sessions done. Um, and I think in a general sense, including Whitley, this seems to be the case that they are able to make sure that we don't remember or recall the negative aspects of it. I think that's part of it. Um, because there are parts and pieces that I don't recall. Kathy helped to bring some back um, using hypnosis to put some of those pieces together. But then as soon as we did, and we, we got the information that we felt was a fit, um, I forgot. I cannot recall that clearly. It just, it doesn't work for me. And I'll ask her, did we, did we have this happen? Did we? Yes. So she can tell me about it. I can't. Um, is this stuff that you, is this stuff that you need to know? Or, I mean, for me, I don't know if I've ever been abducted. Okay, Denise, I, I, I don't know. But I also don't want to know. Uh -huh. You know, that's me. That's me. I'm, I, I'm fine. I'm great. <laughs> yeah, I'm fine, Kay. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Um, is it the same with, is this stuff that you need to know? Or is there stuff that you, you know what, you just want to leave in the box and not open it? No, I want the box open. Some people don't, and I warn them about it. I got to have the box open. I had some work done. Again, it was uh, Kathleen did some hypnosis. I said, take me back to that past life. I want to relive certain aspects of it. I want to see if I had crafts back then. Yes, I did. So now I'm beginning to work with others who, if they want hypnosis, um, I ask them, would you be willing to see if you had a past life? And if so, were you involved with the crafts back then? How have the, how, how have the crafts changed? I, I'm so fascinated with this. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a student of history and, and UFO history. And I go back and I, I just look and I see, I know my own experiences. And I've seen both. Right? I've seen physical craft. I've seen stuff that is pretty frigging out there. Yeah. But but I've seen both. But there's been transitions. Um, how have the craft changed over the years? Well, I think an advanced craft that I was shown um, is what's being flown today, or at least that was the forerunner, um, because it was hourglass-shaped. It was clear. Uh, at times I could see all around as if I wasn't in a physical structure. And then uh, the ET said, would I like a tour of the core of the ship? How big? Okay, let's let's actually look. These are my notes for the show. Tour of the ship, right? <laughs> That's all I want to know. It's not, um, how, how big of a craft was it from the outside? It was way bigger than our vehicle, which it was a Ford Granada back then um, that was new. So I would say, mm, it see, it changed. It warped. It caused right. that beam. It So I'm going to guess maybe half a football field. No, I'm just not sure. Okay, that's, 50 yards. That's a good-sized craft. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, there was so much going on in there, and he took me around a corner, around a curve, and he said, this is, this is, and he didn't use the word core of the ship, and he was something like operating system, 
And I stepped in and I realized I was on a walkway and the water, uh, not the water, the floor uh, on the sides of the walkway was all liquid. It was red and it was flowing and moving. So I'm observing that. And then I look up and at the far end of the room is something that is um, like a human. It's mechanical biological, organic, you name it, it was there. And I said, oh, no, this can't be. And I felt like a heart beating. The whole room was beating. And I said, what is this? And they answered and said, this is what operates the ship. There are many of us. And I realized that she, it was a she, was speaking to me. And I thought, how could they do this to someone like this for a lifetime to operate? And she said, oh, you think that I am trapped here? You're wrong. I can leave when I want to. I can be, she didn't use the word excuse, but she said, this is a working um, device. And there are many of us and we all communicate. We all know where each other exists at any point in time and yet when we have to meet the mothership and she didn't use that term we all go and join we can all reach that huge craft um, but I could not get over the emotions that that created for me I still feel it when I think about it um help me understand um uh again what you're describing here you're going up the walkway you've got the liquid the the red liquid on both sides of the walkway yeah. you at the at the end of the walkway was this being yeah and Covered. That, and that was the being that was talking to you yeah I got you. Um, was uh, was there anybody with you anybody else on the walkway? No well the ET was behind me. Okay, that E.T., that's the one I... Okay, uh -huh. so what did that E.T. look like? He looked like a typical gray, only tall. Only tall. Five and a half feet tall, maybe close to six feet, yeah. Okay, now, can we back up a little bit? Let's back yeah. up. You said that there was um, an E.T. Looking, behind, looking at you behind a tree. Yes. Uh, okay, so that's when you first pulled up in this... In in the round driveway, right? Yeah. Okay. Was that ET that was looking at you? Was that the one with you on the walkway? I don't think that time that it was. I think it was another one. Um, but every other time, it was the same one. In, in, interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Um, anything negative about the tall gray? No. Everything's cool, right? Everything's cool. Yeah. Um. Uh, any communication uh, between, I'm going to get back to the being at the end of the walkway. That's really got my attention. But the tall gray, um, how, uh, what was your perception? Um, robotic, mechanical, biological, what, um, any interaction? Closer to human. Um, and he just, I just heard what he was saying. It was telepathic. Um, he never touched me unless he wanted to soothe me or take away pain. Um, when they were doing whatever experiment it was that was necessary for their scientist, which was another thing altogether. Um, and when I was young, when he came to get me, he was shorter. He had grown through the years, taller, but I knew it was the same one. No one could have told me different. And right. if you put them on a lineup, let's say, you go to jail, you put all the ETs in a lineup, I could find mine, but I don't think anyone else could. Did, first name basis? Did didn't, he have a name? Not that I ever asked for. Okay, okay. okay. I didn't know how, how, how tight you two were. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, um, but, but that's interesting. And you, um, you recognized him, but was yeah. it the same coming back uh, from him? You know, there was this connection. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Um, and now I think he has aged. I never thought he would. And it was kind of a shock when I thought, 
oh, he's older. Would anyone else see it? I doubt it. What made you think, can I ask, what made you think he was older? Uh, wrinkles? Uh, he doesn't have gray hair. When... <laughs> no, he doesn't. <laughs> no. Um, it's real subtle, but yes, there are some little extra folds in right. his chin and his neck and a little bit more creasing up here on the forehead. Yeah. Um, telepathic. I'm not making light of this, Denise. Okay? No, no. But I'm going to ask the obvious question telepathically so how have you been right <laughs> how how, 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 how are things going how's married life uh anything like that any no um he basically only communicated what was absolutely necessary other right. than that he was quiet and okay. i just knew what i was supposed to do what about dress did he have clothes on yeah um uh, any, any, you see, you called him a he. Oh, yes. Okay. How do, how do you know he was a he? Oh, my, that's a, he's interesting. He's, na he's, na he's, he's naked. He's naked. It, was that why? No, there was nothing uh, that Between you could tell. Lines. You couldn't okay. tell. Okay. Uh, I just knew, I met, like when I, first looked at Whitley Stryber's book, Communion, like many other people did. I looked at that, and I knew it was a male. But then when he came out with a latter book, I knew it was female, just by looking at the face on the book. Wow. How do I know? I can't. I can't well, explain it. I'm not wearing makeup. There's no facial hair. There's. Uh -uh. How would you know? I, you could just tell. I could just tell. I just. It's something instinctively that I know. I asked um I asked Travis once and I didn't he laughed about it but yeah. I wanted to know because he said a male and a female uh, entered the room right mm -hmm. and and I said how do you, did she have on makeup I mean how do you know did she smell differently right how do you know he said Jimmy I've never been asked that question before and I don't remember um, is there something um, that outwardly says male and female? Because also, uh, we're, we're going to get to the being at the end of the walkway. You said she was a she. Yep. Okay. Yeah. How do you know these things? I knew that was a female, and I knew the majority of those who were in the same position that she was were females. I, I don't know. That's just what I know. Now, I'm picturing, okay, I want you to describe uh, the being at the end of the walkway because visually I'm picturing something large. Um, this is the operational system yeah. of the ship. Can you describe what she looked like? Yeah, she had, uh, she had features. She had eyes, nose, um, and what I think was a mouth, but that's where some of the botanical organic stuff began to grow. Um, there was what I thought was hair um, because it was darker than the plant life that was a part of her. And then there was tubing, just an enormous amount of tubing that looked similar to that hose that you have in the back of your dryer, um, that kind of accordion type stuff. It looked similar to that, except I felt like if I touched it, that it was not going to be flexible. So, uh, you know, there's a there's a game I like to play. Plankton, flora or fauna, right? Ooh. And so, so you don't have to answer that. But yeah. her, you're describing both. Three things. Mechanical. Yeah. Wow. Organic. She was human. I mean, not what we are, but she had volunteered for that. Uh, control of that craft. Botanical. What a what an a uh, what an amazing word to use when when you're uh, uh, okay. Now I'm just trying to visually picture this. Yeah. When you say beca uh, botanical, green vegetation. Yes. yes. Really. And what color was her skin? Her skin was dark. Um, it was kind of a, a tan, a beigey tan, but there. There was a lot of black 
in it that ex it changed the tint as I looked at her. Was it shadowing? Maybe. Hmm. Like bark? No. No? I could tell it was skin. I could tell it was skin, although I thought it would be rough if I touched it. Um, her nose was very narrow. Um, it was it was very, oh gosh, long ago European, the statues that, that had uh, very much, I can't think of the word, where everything was very fine. Sure, sure. The mouth was fine, yeah. Yeah, Greek, Greek. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Okay. How tall was she? Taller than me. I was standing on the platform and where she ended, the, I could see the top of the platform. So she was probably mm, seven feet. You know, this is a movie, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. This is a movie. <laughs> um, okay. And now, how? okay, you, you describe her as human. Yeah. So two arms, two legs, fingers. No, didn't see that. You didn't. You only saw her torso. I saw her head, her what I thought was hair, her neck, and the beginning of the shoulders. And the, so, is that where the mechanical part comes in? Yes, that was all. But was kind of behind her. But there was so much overgrowth of this stuff. And, and I think that it was also a part of what kept her alive. It was a form of food, I think. Um, wow, wow, wow. And, oh, okay. Yeah. And uh, um, did no arms? No. How, okay, so she's controlling the ship with her mind. Yeah. I'm, I'm guessing here, but is that what you think? I think so. Um, and you know, people will try to talk me out of it. They'll try to say, that's not what you saw. Oh yes, it was. And I mm -hmm. wouldn't have had the emotion. I still see it when I think about it now. I recall, I remember, I remember that room beating like a heart. Kathleen had me under hypnosis to take a really good look at it. And I started to react. She was a little bit afraid, so brought me out. She thought, she said it looked like somebody was throwing beanbags at me. My muscles were, it looked like they were being hit. So she brought me to, and she said, okay, this is what happened. How much do you remember? And I said, I want you to take me back, and I want you to videotape it. And? We did. And? And it happened again. And? and we stayed there until we got through what we wanted to see. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, um, how long were, were you on the ship? Do you have any idea? Um, well, the ship in, in Colorado, yes, about maybe two and a half hours, three. Wow. Okay, and now, so you've described it as a tour of the ship. Yeah. And when you first entered, you're on this walkway with the with the red liquid. Um, yeah. That was that. What else did you see on the ship? I saw smaller grays all lined up against the wall, you know, back to front, back to front. And not a one of them moved unless they were told to. So I got the strong feeling they were robots. And uh, how many, uh, how many, was it just one open area or there? No, rooms. There, there were, were rooms. And wh what did you see? Well, where I was taken um, for them to do some sort of experiment on me, um, testing, the, I call him the doctor. He was insectoid. And he was not certain, I don't think, of what my reaction was going to be of testing me. He stuck things up my nose. He did all kinds of things. And he, when I screamed at him, I yelled at him to cut it out, knock it off. And he turned his head at an angle to me and picture a praying mantis and moved right up close. And he looked like, what is she doing? He didn't understand the emotions at all. Was there any communication? No. No, no. Um, um, you protested. Was there pain? Or you just didn't want yeah. to? There, no, there was pain. Um, and that's the very 
first time I'm pretty sure that the ET, the gray, touched my forehead and I just completely relaxed. Like morphine. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. Um, not that I would know what that felt like. <laughs> but okay, so you get um uh you, you calm down. And you're not feeling, did the protesting stop too as well? Were you just like in a relaxed yeah. state? Very relaxed, yeah. And, and I was also thinking, okay, we're going to get through this. We'll just get it over with. And I just kind of relaxed with it. And it was right after that. I don't know if it was an award for behaving. That's when he took me to the core of the ship. And uh, what the, was the, uh, okay, hold on. I think I have the timeline messed up. Was the core of the ship the botanical being? Yes. Okay, so that happened later. Yeah. Oh, so they went straight to the experiments. Get that over with, I guess. Right. Um, okay, 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 yeah. okay. Let's, let's, uh, when, when, um, uh, when you entered, We've heard so many different experiencers talk about uh, these situations. Um, everything is different. I don't think it's the same. It I, yeah, I don't think it's the same group of ETs. Um, no. uh, but uh, what was that room like? Did you know what you were what, what you were about to encounter when you saw the room? I wasn't sure. No, I was a little bit curious, a little bit leery, kind of like a cat hiding behind the table, peeking out to see what was going on. So it was that sense. I'm not sure. Do I want to take another step forward? I knew I had no choice. Um, so, yeah, that kind of, yeah. Were you being led? Yeah. You were. So did it, um, somebody in front of you, somebody in back of you? next to me didn't have to um try and block me from leaving i just knew keep moving forward step forward a little more into that room there yeah um i, I want to back up for a quick second you described the craft um as clear yeah some of the time it was uh-huh um so stealthy you know what I mean? If you saw yes. the sky, you would see through it like right. glass. You would see through it. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Okay. And did that uh when you stepped inside, the walls are solid. Yes. They were solid. How confused were you? And you must have just gone, oh, what the I was. I was very confused. Um, of course, I didn't know at the time who I was going to talk to or should I talk to anyone. Um, you're just in a befuddled mess <laughs> for a while, for a long while. Yeah. Um, the Okay. So back to the room. So yeah. you're the cat peeking out. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what do you see, you know, when you... Um, you know, Travis Walton, his description, and, and Whitley's, and his description. Yeah. Uh, Calvin Parker's uh, description is. That's uh, right. Right. Everybody's got a, a pretty interesting take, but they've all used the word sterile, and, like, uh -huh. they knew uh, something was, there There was an examination that was about to happen. Yeah. Did you see that? W w describe the room. Was there a table? and, and Yes. Equipment? Everything kind of melded into the floor. There were no nuts and bolts, no seams, no nothing. It was all one piece, and it was a brushed metal look to it. Um, as the table was cold. Um, and it could move, but I wondered how they were doing certain things um, because that table could go up and down. They could tip it. One of the things I did as a seven-year-old child, it's a wonder my mother didn't hang me, I could not get the picture of this chair they put me in back at seven years old. So I took a bobby pin. I would sit at the top of the stairs and try to etch it into the wallpaper. <laughs> and she'd say, if you do that again, I'm going to cut your arms off. And, I, and I'd say, okay. And then I'd get another bobby pin and away I'd go. I've never been able to draw it perfectly. But it was the same thing when I was an adult. The same piece of equipment. Um, I hope this isn't too sensitive. In um, 
uh, Betty and Barney, and I've heard this same thing, but Betty and Barney, they started off on their stomachs. Yeah. Right? They had their back examined first and their their vertebrae and, and the spine, I should say. Um, what did did you start off on your back or were you always on your back or your stomach? I was always on my back. Um, and oh, then I've lost. They would... Okay. Hello? Okay. Repeat, repeat. We, you oh. froze for just a second. Oh. Were you on your back or your stomach? Back. Only the chair, it, even though it was metal, it could all change shape. So they would sit me half up and uh, half sitting position. Um, they did put the needle in the navel. Um, that was done and I swung at him that time. That was what made me yell. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wow. Okay. Um, uh, Denise, stay right there. We need to take a break. Let's uh, get that in. This is Fade to Black. Our guest tonight, Denise Stoner. Tonight we're talking about alien abductions. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black. Please visit all of our sponsors. We're taking a quick break here. All of the links are below, and we'll be right back. Join us November 10th, 11th, and 12th, 2023, as Disclosure Fest Foundation and Fade to Black Radio presents Stairway to the Stars, a human origins, science, and technology expo, live at the Luxor Hotel and Casino on the Las Vegas Strip. With live talks, lectures, and workshops by world-acclaimed researchers and authors, this is Jimmy Church, by the way, and I'll be your host all weekend long. Featuring topics like human origins, ancient technologies, indigenous Indigenous teachings, workshops, a mass meditation, yoga and sound healing, music, and so much more. Don't miss our intimate sky watch and meteor shower over the infamous Area 51 airspace in Rachel, Nevada, with special surprise celebrity host guiding us through the night. Also introducing our Disclosure Fest VR Starship Area with dozens of rides. You've got to check it out. This event will sell out. For more information and tickets, please visit Disclosure fest.org this is jimmy church and i want to introduce you to life waves x39 stem cell activation patch which has totally transformed my health my sleep brain and my eyes i no longer need reading glasses x39 is a true breakthrough in regenerative science Using light, X39's patented age reversal technology is clinically proven to signal the activation of younger stem cells, accelerating the body's natural healing process. X39 promotes restoration and rejuvenation, bringing the life-changing benefits that I've experienced. By naturally elevating a master signaling peptide in the body, X39 boosts vitality, health and wellness, and resets 4,000 genes to a younger, healthier state. It's one patch, once a day, and you can turn back time with X39. Just go to HealingWorksNow.com. That's works with an X. HealingWorksNow.com. Hey, everybody. It's Billy Carson, also known as Forbidden Knowledge. I want to talk to you about a very special event coming up July 30th, 2023, the Forbidden Conscious Awards. We're going to honor people who have been contributing to the conscious community for decades. People that you know and love that have helped you get to higher levels of thought and consciousness and awareness. It's going to be a live in-person event, but seats are going to sell out very fast. You want to make sure you're there in person. And guess what? You can help vote for the winners. Voting is available on ForbiddenKnowledge.com. And the categories are going to be social media influencer, podcast slash radio host, TV host, actor, director, producer, entrepreneurs, health and wellness, philanthropists, authors, field researchers, archaeologists, space anomaly hunters, and of course, a Lifetime Achievement Award. I'll be your key note speaker that night at the Forbidden Conscious Awards. We have celebrity guests performing. We'll have a halftime show where we're actually going to perform music for you. And don't forget about the pre-event mixer where if you buy a box seat, you'll be in the VIP section and you also have private access to a VIP mixer with celebrity guests. Shake hands, break bread, network, and then walk the red carpet with us and take amazing photos. It's going to be a night to remember. You don't want to forget this. Make sure you hurry up and get your tickets because they're selling out very fast. I want to see you there for Bid and Conscious Awards 2023. River Moon Coffee, makers of the Fade to Black Blend. Truly the best coffee on planet Earth. 
Just visit rivermoonwellness.com or, or their Amazon store. It's all simple to do. You can check out the Fade to Black blend, the Game Changer blend, or any of their Black Moon Wellness products. It's the only coffee I drink. It is the best, and it's Doc. Again, rivermoonwellness.com. River Moon Coffee. The links are below. Fade to Black Blend. Our guest tonight, Denise Stoner. And we're talking about alien abductions. And uh, Denise, I wanted to ask uh, a a couple of like logistical uh, questions. Um, Do you have a count? How, How many abduction experiences have you had? From age two and a half until about five years ago, I would say 50. Five zero. Five zero, yeah. 50. And your last experience was five years ago? About five years ago. It was more of a visitation. They did not take me. Um, it was one that showed up, the ET showed up in my back room. Uh, I opened the door in the evening and there he was. Um, and I don't recall what that was all about. If I was told something, just letting me know he was still there. Um, I don't know. With, um, uh, I, I keep going back to Travis and Betty and, and, right. and stuff like that, where um, uh, Travis described, I think his description was a, a sphere, right? Uh-huh. It was a ball. Um, I've seen different takes on it but that's a basic thing um betty and barney that was that was a saucer shaped craft yeah. uh, with windows on it um you uh describe one of the craft as uh, an hourglass clear shaped craft about 50 yards wide um how have the craft for you changed over the years well they have changed exponentially, I would say, because of their ability to cloak um, or not. And there are some very large units out there. Um, there's a possibility that Kathleen and I were on the same ship um, at one point, And I never heard or read or had someone speak to me about a craft that had a balcony. And this craft had a balcony. I was taken here out of my home in Florida. And wherever we were was cold. Um, It could have been Colorado, could have been Sweden, Norway, you name it. I looked below and saw little A-frame buildings. Um, But back inside, they were forming lines, the ETs. There were different kinds. And they were not happy with what was going on and the decision they had made to work this project. There were several, many uh, humans on the craft. I possibly saw Kathy take a young woman's hand and run down the hall and duck into a room as if she was trying to hide. Then I found out later that, yes, if it was not the same craft she was on with me, it was one similar. She was afraid to go out on that balcony because of gravity thought we were going to fall off. And I knew because when the balcony pulled out and we went down and stepped out onto it, they said, step forward. And you felt something. You couldn't fall off. It held you. Um, What was... Wait, 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 wait. What do you mean um, a a balcony? Um, Yeah. We, I have a balcony on the back of my house. (laughs) Nope. Okay, I, I I don't. Oh, are you are you describing it similar to that? Um, I just I, I just got back from a cruise. Okay. Oh yeah. And uh, my stateroom, I had a balcony, right? Sliding glass door, stepped out. I got a couple of chairs and a table, and it's a balcony and a rail. Is that what you are describing? Something like that. This opened up from the back of the craft. It was big and it pulled out and there were, it was sectioned off. As a matter of fact, I recognize someone who lives in this town, asked them later if they owned an outfit like, and I described it and they said, yeah, but you'd never see it. I only wear that at home. So that verified for me, this individual had been on the craft and we were all sectioned off. You could, 
look over the edge. There were no, there was no furniture, nothing like that. And the ship tipped and you could see big granite cliffs and pine trees and that type of area. Um, and we were there for a purpose. And I didn't like the purpose. I don't think that the ETs did either. Um, but they said, we will tell you. We, we had a black box, each of us. No seams. Um, I felt like there was something very precious there that I had responsibility for. And then when we reached the balcony and they said, we'll tell you, you drop it. So they signaled us. And I reached over and dropped the box off the balcony and I watched. And when it got close to the home, the little A-frame, it completely disintegrated. It sparkled and disintegrated. I couldn't see anything after that. Um, and I kept saying, what is this? What am I holding? I don't understand. I felt something that I shouldn't have been doing. And they said, what is in there? we have contained the living soul of a new hybrid to be born in that home below you. And that was the purpose of this project. Why, why were they, why were they upset about this purpose? Well, I think they thought that we should be dropping our own souls and uh, be responsible for those. They didn't want to do it. Um, the whole thing was scrambled. There were people trying to run away. It was a huge ship. Um, I turned around from the balcony and I could touch the surface, but I could not see the other end. I could not see. It was huge. It was rough. Um, it was not shiny. Um, and I knew what we were supposed to do, that there was no way out. Um, when I got back home, my husband was sitting at the computer in the other room from our bedroom, he came in and he said, were you taken? I, I have that feeling. He described it as coming out of anesthesia. And I said, yeah. And my night clothes uh, and my feet were frozen. My cheeks were all rosy red like I'd been out in the cold. This is Florida. It was not cold. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Um. Linda Moulton Howe has written about and spoken about, I've talked to her about this, um, soul containers. Um, is, is, is that what you're referring to here? Were these boxes containing souls? Yes, they were. And I knew it. I felt it. I was emotional about it. I didn't want to do it. Nobody else did either. But, but everybody did toss yeah. the boxes off the balcony. Yes. Um, Kathleen remembers being on a balcony and afraid that the gravity, you know, wouldn't hold her to, to the floor. Um, but I've never discussed with her whether or not she actually had a box. What, what's your takeaway here? I, and, and I mean, you probably have a hundred takeaways, but is this like what you know David Jacobs and others have have talked about this uh, hybrid uh, you know this hybrid uh, program that is going on I'm specifically talking about the black boxes and the balcony um is, what's your what's your takeaway is is there you know is there a reason for this I wish I knew if there was a reason I do know that whatever was in there was going to a human mother. Mm -hmm. um, it was going to be born with gifts. I don't know if you want to call them the indigo children or the, you know, specially uh, special abilities, uh, possibly to predict um, events coming in the future or to, I just had all those mixed feelings. That's what was in that container, a very special child. Is this something that um, is going on all the time? Do you think that this is, oh, 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 I just thought of another question that I meant to ask a few minutes ago. I'll circle back to that. Is this something that is just going on across the country? 
Boy, I, I don't know. There were so many people on that one craft. Um, and again, we're not sure, but we think that Kathy might have been on there um, and trying to run away <laughs> or hide. Um, and everybody just in a state of confusion. Um, but yet they knew they had to get us under control, get us in line. There was a, a walkway going to the right, one to the left, and a massive console that that was the operation of that particular craft totally different from the living being now um the other humans uh that were on this craft were they um i'm just gonna ask directly were they americans or did we have different countries represented I know that two of the people didn't speak English uh, that had been taken. Um, and since it was nighttime, I was taken from my bed. But there was a woman dressed to the hilt in the most beautiful gown and just draping with jewelry and a fancy scarf that blew in the wind. And um, I had fiery red hair. I had a feeling she came from somewhere else. Interesting. Yeah. Um, fascinating, fascinating. Okay, so what, um, uh, when everything started to kick off back in uh, 2017, New York Times, and we all, you know, we, we know what ha has happened since then, Congress, yeah. Washington, D.C., Department of Defense, and, 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 and so forth. Um, but, uh, when you saw those videos, and I'm not saying that those videos represent UFOs or anything ET, but was there anything that you saw in those videos that reminded you of your own experiences? Yeah, there are books, there are people, um, and more and more are starting to compare notes. We're discovering the commonalities. Uh, where do these people want to go now? What do they expect in sharing their experiences. And yes, there are a lot of commonalities. The, um, the hearings that we've had have centered around the military aspect of this. Um, I am curious yeah. if uh, experiencers will speak in front of Congress. Do you, do you expect this to happen? Not right now. I think that they're they're tiptoeing through a very dense forest um, as far as our government, other governments, and what they want to say. What what kind of story do they want to come up with to make it easier for people to understand that these visitors are not from Earth? Another comment that has been made, um, both with, like Susan Goff of, of the Department of Defense, but uh, other witnesses um, that have spoken um, uh, to Congress and to the Senate, that they don't know what's going on, right? The, 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 yeah. the phenomena seems to be happening, but we don't know nothing. Are you buying that part of the story? No. Why? No, I'm not. Um, well, first of all, having worked for the government and discounting uh, Department of Interior, but the military, they didn't want me doing what I do for a hobby, even after hours. Um, and I was the type that was a little edgy. So if they would come and say, you know, you really shouldn't be doing this, it's not necessary to do that. We're developing everything we need here in this research facility and i said no you're not <laughs> and so they said well what do you what do you mean and i said that's that's about it if you don't want me doing this you certainly don't want me to open up about it so then i would test i brought a little piece of stained glass that said be still and no somebody walked into my office and said what is that what does that mean what are you trying to say you're up to no good <laughs> so yeah there is all. Uh, do we have? Do we have craft in our possession? I believe so. Yeah. Oh, it, there seems to be a lot of chatter right now going on about this in 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 an official capacity. Um, 
you know, from the Senate, I did, did that uh, the Wilson Davis document uh, was brought up at the UFO hearing uh, last year with Andre Carson of Indiana. Um, it would, I don't think that the Senate or the Intelligence Committee or any, you know, the House of Representatives, I don't think that they have any idea about this. And yeah. it's kind of shocking to them. I think that's true. Um, I had the opportunity to meet and speak to Paul Hellyer, the mm -hmm. former Minister of Defense of Canada. And he said, there are UFOs, they are from somewhere else, and I know it. And he explained to me, he said, you know, one of our presidents made a deal. And thinking they had control of this little contract they had made, we didn't have control of anything when it came to our visitors and some of us being taken. They agreed to so many, but aftermath of that was we'll take whoever we want. We have something going here and we're going to take them until. Are you suggesting that we just don't have any control over this? Nope. No, I don't believe we do. And, and ET doesn't, doesn't care. Well, look, I, I, I don't mean it like that. Yeah. But I do. In that we're, we're out capturing, um, you know, when you were a kid, you had a little bug jar yep. and you're throwing out, you know, fireflies and bees yeah. with that, with without any concern about the bee family or the fire family that you <laughs> separated, you know, and we're just out doing, is, is it like that with ET with, with humans? I think it's close. I'd, I'd step it up a couple of steps. Um, I was How? a scuba diver and mm -hmm. I, I taught scuba, but then I carried it a little further. I went to the underwater caves um, both in Mexico and here in Florida, diving in the aquifer. And I could not resist wanting to see what was around the next corner, thousands of feet carrying tanks, leaving oxygen um, for decompression. As I went thousands of feet into the aquifer that you had to come out before you could go up. And I was watching fossils from many, many years and years away, sticking out of the walls. And I kept thinking, what am I going to see around the next corner? What kind will that be? What will I have to work with? Um, I would I would step it up to that. It, 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 curiosity? Oh, it's extreme curiosity. Um, I had a couple of experiences in the ocean here in Florida um, where I saw things. We were doing a night dive and we saw these things that were curly cue and long and I put my glove up to touch them and then I'd look and they'd disappear. I pulled a jar from my vest, dive vest, tried to capture some in there. As soon as I put the lid on, they were gone, but then they'd come and flash in our face and then disappear. And our boat captain was a former Navy SEAL so he dove then and he dove for recreational purposes and he had never, he said, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what those are. What, what do you, what do you think the purpose of the hybridization program is? Is it possibly to occupy earth to prepare ET for occupation here? Or is there something else going on? I think using and mixing the DNA, and this is just totally my feeling. I don't have anything to base it on to improve who we are as humans and to improve who they are as ET and from other planets. Did, did, was there any, um, with, with you, was there any samples uh, that were taken? Um, yes, from me. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, when I woke up one morning, I woke up hitting the floor. I was a couple of feet above the floor next to my bed and I slammed down um, and I started looking. I felt like I had just been returned. I had bruises and marks. I took pictures and Kathleen has those. Um, and when I was, that's another story. Um, but I think I was healed 
that time that I went to that other place, that near-death experience. Um, it's written in my medical jacket, and Kathleen has that, that said I expelled from, and again, I, I don't know if you want to put this on the air, but from every orifice a violent purple liquid. They could not find out what it was. Um, but a funny nurse came to my bed. I have a drawing of her. And I had an artist do that for me. She lifted me off the bed. I remember that. Changed the sheets. Settled me back down and said, I'm going to take these to the lab for your doctor. She was gone. The sheets were gone. They never reached the lab. There was only a small uh, mark of that stuff on my hospital gown. And they couldn't figure out what it was. Uh, okay, let's back up. Let's back up. Uh, too late, by the way. This is a live show. So that's... <laughs> um, what, purple liquid yeah. from every... Your, your word was every orifice in your body. Right. Uh, what, what do you... It, I, have, yeah. I, I can't even wrap my head around that statement. Um, yeah. So describe the liquid. I saw it. Um, it was a violent purple, just like they described it. And it was a little thicker than water. I saw mm -hmm. it absorb into the sheets. I know I can put my hand where it was on the gown. Um, and in the end, the end result, I had the near-death experience. And I was given only 20% chance to live. That's when I was 20 years old in 1969. Um, uh, uh, eyes, ears, nose, mouth, and, and a couple of other exit points too. Yeah. As well. <laughs> yes. Um, and the nurse took off. Um, uh, she didn't look normal. She had great big, great big almond eyes and a nurse's cap that was from the 1940s, the same with her dress. And she said, everything's going to be all right. I had had a double stroke, damage to my brainstem. I couldn't speak or walk. They took me into surgery, and they removed all but three feet of my small intestine and part of my stomach. But no mention in your medical records about this purple liquid. Just that statement. That, that they saw it, that it was there, this was the color of it, and they had no explanation for it. And 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 obviously no test results. No. I, okay, so what's your best guess? What, what do you think that was? I felt like, and again, it's, is this real? Is it not? As far as what I'm going to say, that I was cleansed of something. Um, now, okay, okay. I need to understand um, uh, what we're talking. Okay, you said you were twenty. Yep. Okay, you had a, a double stroke. Yes, a double stroke. Okay, it, 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 and you were in the hospital because of this. Right. And that's where this happened. Yeah, it did. And so yeah. this wasn't this wasn't regression therapy. This wasn't. No. This wasn't an abduction experience. This was an actual event in a hospital with you. Yeah. Yeah. When the nurse came in, I looked at her and I thought, oh, you look familiar, but you're not one of our nurses. This kept scrambling in my brain because by then I had gotten some control of everything again. Um, and Yet I had this pain that they couldn't they couldn't figure out what was going on with me. That's why I ended up in surgery. Um, and I had blood clots from my pelvic area to my brain. They could not figure out how those blood clots got through my stomach, my heart, my lungs without killing me. That's incredible. And when you uh, when you left the hospital after that, how did you feel? You said you felt cured. Oh, I felt fantastic. Yeah, I did. Um, they told me I'd never be able to go to work. They told me, that, oh, there were lots of things that I shouldn't do. I had to learn to drive again, and I did. And um, the scuba diving, <laughs> I should never have done that, but I did it anyway. 
um, I didn't know that I shouldn't have. When um, we are uh, talking about the abduction experience, one of the things that uh, fascinates me probably the most about this is that there are millions of people out there that have these experiences. And it can't be some mass psychosis. Oh, no. I mean, people don't even know people. Um, Their stories vary so drastically, but at the same time, it, it comes to the same conclusion. They were taken, they were in some sort of craft, they saw these entities um, that didn't look human at all. Um, they were told in some instances where they were from, um, described the way they lived, and there were healings. There are people that I know, because I'm, I'm working with it, that have been healed by ETs. Kathleen's one of them. And yeah. that's all I could say about that, unless she told it herself. <laughs> yeah, right, 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 right. Um the but but this is this is what I'm 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 getting to. It seems that if if millions of people are having uh the same experiences, um how many are keeping it inside of themselves? Um, and are not talking about it. Um, it seems that uh, we all know somebody that has had an experience. And so it becomes a numbers game. This is a yeah. huge amount of people that are having these experiences. And it's, it's, it's not, again, it's, you can't strike it up to imagination or movies or bad no. dreams. No. And people that have held this in for 30 to 40 years and are just now saying, I'm going to spill it, I'm 70, I'm 80, I'm going to tell. And I think that my parents were taken too um, and describe. I know mine were. I, I can describe what, what my dad saw at the bedroom. He was a, a bomber in the war. And so he knew planes. He knew what was supposed to be there. And when I was just a little kid, he and my mom went to bed. We were all on the third floor, my grandparents, and he saw out the window lights coming towards the windows. And he said to my mom, they were just laying there talking, if that comes any closer, it's going to hit the house. His normal reaction would be to run down the hall and rescue my sister and I. My grandparents got us out of there. The next thing he knew, it was morning. It seems to be generational. I mean, yeah. we, we hear this over and over again. Um, uh, there, you just reminded me of of something. I was in my. Uh, you're gonna love this. I'm, <laughs> I'm 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 in my dentist's office. Okay, my dentist's name was JJ. Okay, mm. uh, German Asian, German Japanese. Okay, wow. mom was German. How do I know this? I knew his mom. And his oh. mom uh, was probably, when I met her in her early 70s, and she was his receptionist. So I'm in the waiting room. Um, this is probably 98 or so. But I've got Philip Corso's book. Uh. And I'm reading it in the waiting room. She sees, you know, Jimmy, what are you reading? I said, well, you know, this new book, Philip Corso, Roswell. <laughs> And this is what she says to me, Denise. Now, I've never talked to her about UFOs. You know, I right? This is a dentist office waiting room, uh. I'm waiting to get my teeth cleaned or whatever. All right. She goes, I was abducted by aliens. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. I look at a 70-year-old German lady who I love. She's great. Yeah is looking at me straight in my eyes. And I said, what are you talking about? She goes, World War II. We were wow. all taken down. We were in London. Bombs are coming in. And uh, all the families in our building went downstairs into the bomb shelter. Or more. We're all in there. Mm -hmm. I said, okay. And she goes, and then they abducted me. The little ETs showed up and, and took me. And she uh. said, they brought me back. Um, four, I think she said four, four hours, four hours later and dropped her off back in the bomb shelter. And she said, everybody's running. 
you've been where were <laughs> this is just one room right one room yeah. with four families in it and i just disappeared for four hours and it was my little et friends uh. that took me. now uh, here's what here's what's crazy about that story i believe her Right. And how many people have this kind of story? She was yeah. willing to talk to me about it, but I, this wasn't um, uh, a, a crazy imagination. She was not in the room and they were freaking out because she wasn't in there. Right. And she, yeah. she had told me it's just a small bomb shelter, you know, with four families in there. Mm -hmm. um, and, and how many have the same story, the same experience? I wouldn't be surprised if many, many. I, I just think that we are totally unaware of the enormity of this situation. Uh, I, I'd really like to know. Um, that's why I think we all try to write a book. We, you know, I have the two of them. I wrote part of with Kathy, and another one we shared equally. Um, people read that and they find us, and they want to talk. And they want relief. They want us to understand and to believe them. How many people um, uh, reach out to you each month, either through MUFON or because they've read your book and they reach out? How, ma how many people uh, reach out to you each month? 80 to 100. 80 to 100? Yeah. 1,200 a year. And you're just one. You're just one person. Yeah. What, what does that tell you? Tells me a lot. Tells me people are seeking help and understanding and support. And what more can you give? Um, you can't say, oh, yeah, mine's parked right out back here. Um, this is where I live. Come on, I'll take you a tour. Um, <laughs> you just need to be there for the individuals because sometimes they don't believe it themselves. They want to call it uh, negative um, demons. Um, because of their background and upbringing and their faith. So, yeah, it's tough. And how many, um, let's talk about missing time for a second, because in yeah. more cases than not, right, we have a missing time experience. I haven't had that. I don't, I don't, I don't know what it's like, but to yeah. go, wait a minute, it's six o'clock at night. I don't remember anything since noon today. Yeah. I, I, I don't have that experience. But I, I, what are those kinds of connections with the people that reach out to you where you're connecting the dots, where you have this these kinds of similarities? Well, they do have those experiences and the similarities and other things that occur, my husband was with us or with me um, on a dive trip up north, Florida, and we were driving along, headed back for Orlando, so we know that that's going south. Right. And then all of a sudden, we see the sign for Valdosta, Georgia. Don't know how that happened. Don't know how we got there. Had to turn around and travel extra hours to get us on the way home. Um, it happened more than once. Sometimes we just got switched over a few streets. We were probably taken and they didn't know where to put us back. Uh, don't know. But both of us have figured out that we have an odd feeling in our heads, in our brains, when they're going to take, usually just me. Uh, we don't know the full story of him. Um, Coming back, my mom was following us one day, and we felt that feeling and pulled off the road, which was the back end of one of our state parks. So it was all fenced in wild jungle, and I think we were supposed to stop there, and we felt like we were going to be taken. Something was coming. We were going to be gone. Then my mom pulls up in her car with our daughter, and it all it stopped. What did your mom say? She said, what do you think you're doing? <laughs> where, where are you going? And we just looked at her and said, don't know. <laughs> had, had your hus has your husband had any sessions? Uh, Kathleen did hypnosis on him, yes. And? And um, he describes a room, 
Uh, I believe that he said he feels it's metallic. He said something about possible table. And then it comes to where he's probably going to see who's there as far as entities. And he stopped her. He said, okay, that's good. <laughs> I don't need to see. But it was all right in, in our book. Um, when he was in the truck, we were again going diving and it's you turn left at the fence and go behind the farmer's barn. We both saw something behind this barn. And then the truck was stopped. I was taken. He was able to draw the ET, bringing me back, carrying me and lifting me into the seat, the passenger seat. So he remembers that. Um, I have... Uh, going back to Betty and Barney Hill, right? Yeah. Have you and your husband b been on the same craft at the same time? That we don't know. I, I don't know because he really doesn't want to explore it. Uh, being a Vietnam vet and being, you know, having gone through all of that. And then um, he's really struggled and done such a good job of taking care of our family. Um, I think he just didn't want that to be another thing that entered his life. He said, fine for me, you know, um, but no, he didn't want to see any more. What, what, what's his first name? His name is Edward. Edward, Ed. Edward, yeah. Edward, I'm with you, brother. <laughs> 100% with you. Oh. Just do your thing, brother. That's all. That's all. I mean, I, 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 I have, um, uh, I've had a few weird things yeah. and now uh, as far as ET goes, I don't want to know. I mean, I, I think that a, a past life, uh, regression would be interesting and would be a lot of fun and maybe I would learn something, um, and also learn something about the process. Okay. <laughs> I've seen it done. I've I've been present when when these sessions have happened, and I'm fascinated with it. Yeah, missing time and ET. I don't want to know. <laughs> well, do you think there's a reason you don't want to know? Um, uh, yeah, I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I, you know, when um. When I talked to Whitley uh, about this, now now Travis um, and and Betty Andreessen, by the way, bless her heart, right? Yeah, I love yeah. that. One. But um, uh, there there were aspects to to it. Oh oh, I wanted to talk uh, talk about uh, uh, the interrupted journey, uh, the book. Um, in that there. Those cases, when you really read into them, they're terrifying. I mean, I, I just yeah. cannot imagine uh, going through that. And so let me uh, share this with you. I, I, I've told, sure. Kathleen, told Kathleen this story. I move into this house in Pasadena. I'm brand new to California. It's an empty house. There's nothing there. And uh, my first night in the house, I was walking around uh, the empty rooms, right? Mm -hmm. I'm just happy to have a house, right? And, and so uh, empty rooms. And I go in this front bedroom and I open up the closet. I'm just, there's nothing in that whole house is painted white, right? There's yeah. nothing in there. But I, so, and I open up this and there's these two books on this shelf in this closet. In the, and I went, oh, okay. I don't have a TV. There's a couple of books. That's kind of cool. <laughs> and I and I take the books down and guess what? It was an interrupted journey. Oh yeah. my goodness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. So so I go back. I had a pillow and a blanket and I'm sleeping on the floor. And uh and I go and I started and that that was I knew about Betty and Barney Hill, but I had never read yeah. the book. And um, I think I finished finished it maybe that night or a couple of nights later, um, and it it scared me. The book scared me, and the way that um, because it was a transcription of uh, a lot of their sessions, right. yeah, um, it, it, you know, a direct translation. Uh, th the book frightened me, and that's why that right there is why I don't want I don't I don't want to know. I don't. I don't want to. Barney, when you listen to the tapes, oh yeah, Barney, 
I, I don't want to be that guy. Yeah. You know, he's terrified. Yeah. He, um, and I've, I've, I've talked to Kathleen about this. He's, he was, you know, he's a strong individual, you know, um, interracial marriage. He's black. Yes. Upstanding member of the community. He was in the politics and, and getting stuff done in his life. Yeah. And, to, you know, to look at him and then hear his voice in those sessions. Oh, yeah. I, I just don't want to be that guy. He was taken to a place that uh, that absolutely mentally that terrified him. Yeah. Yeah, it sure did. Um, Betty was a little more out there, uh, began to ask questions and wanted to take the book off the craft that got taken away from her. Um, so she was just a little bit more um, curious. Very. I guess. Curious. Yeah, well, where are you dudes from? Right? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, yeah. I love that part yeah. about it, you know, and 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 the star map and and everything. And had she not have been as inquisitive and curious, um, we may yeah. never have uh, uh, gotten uh, that star map. And that's true. The way that she saw that. Did you do any of that yourself? Somebody asked me um, before before you answer that question. Mm -hmm. Somebody asked me uh, the other day. I think I did an AMA or something. Jimmy, what would the three questions you, uh, you would ask E.T.? <laughs> yeah. I think the first question, where are you from? Where are you guys from? Yeah. Where, where, where are you from? Uh, did you uh, uh, did you ask those questions? Did you try to find out? I mean, 50, 50 yeah. experiences. Uh, did you go there? Yeah, I did. Um, and the only thing I can tell you there is, I've been told to watch the skies. I've been told just to be aware of my surroundings and what's going on. And when I go out to sky watch, it has to be in the winter here in Florida, not because of the heat, but because of where the stars are. And I have been told to watch um, Orion's belt and to be very uh, studious about it. And I can, I have seen objects leaving that area of the sky between 8.30 and 10.30 at night. Um, so somebody told me something because I'm getting results looking that way. Orion's belt, yeah. um, when it cycles over my house, you know, each year, uh -huh. I cannot, I cannot stop looking at it <laughs> I, 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 I i'm just right there right there, and i just sit and stare mm -hmm. at it for forever yeah I'm fascinated with it there's a lot of stars in the sky and for oh, yeah. some reason i am drawn to orion's belt and uh, uh man um i'll have to look 8 30 to 10 30 at night at night in the winter you won't see anything at least i haven't but i've been told to be aware so somewhere up in that area, I'm assuming that's where they were from. Last year, I had the best year with Orion's belt. It passed right over, just right over the, you know, and and uh, I could just go out at night. And so anyway, towards the end, as it was cycling through, and then it was behind my house, I was all bummed out. I was like, man, I don't have Orion's belt anymore. Um, but uh, I'm waiting for it to come back. I want to uh -huh. ask um, uh, uh, before we wrap up tonight. Uh -huh. you, you said five years ago was your last contact experience. Yeah. Um, was that uh, tall gray? Was it? Was it your buddy? It was my tall gray. Yes, my companion, my escort. Um, yes, he was just standing back there, and I feel like he told me something. We cannot get that out. A lot of us, and you've probably spoken to those who say this, we know something. And we're not allowed to tell yet. We've been shown something. I saw something on a screen in a craft that had to do with our earth. Um, but I can't get to the back side of that, that I could explain completely what is going to happen to us. How long was uh, the encounter that night? Um, which the one your last one five years ago oh probably five minutes because i just stood there i opened the door we have 
that's used as kind of a storage room for my crafts and things like and I just stood there and, and it was almost like, what are you doing here? What are you doing back here? And so I just stood and looked. The light was on in the hall behind me. The lights were out in the room. I did not turn them on, but it was easy to see him. And uh, five minutes stare down. <laughs> yeah, just kind of looking at him like, what have you got to say for yourself? <laughs> yeah. Uh, do they yeah. smile? I mean, you know, did, did he say hello? No. No, it's just, it's almost like the eyes um, and whatever comes through from them to you. They're very serious. Yeah. And what was the what was the purpose of this though? Just perhaps checking on. I don't know. I I am clueless. Um, the instance with the nurse in the hospital that was 1969. Fast forward to oh, I'd have to look at the year, but not too many years ago. Doorbell rang in the morning. My daughter falls asleep on the sofa watching TV all night. I told her, just don't answer the door if your dad and I aren't awake. Doorbell, bing, 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 and then knock, knock, and she called, Mom, somebody's at the door. So I came up. We have a monitor. I looked in the monitor, and I had this drawn also. There stood, only in different clothing, the nurse. What? I knew it. I knew that's who it was. I knew that I knew this person. I saw in the monitor, she's looking at me, I'm looking at her. And I thought, okay, I'm going to open the door. And when I opened the door, she was more than halfway across the parking lot and went between two houses and was gone. You know, that's creepy, right? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I've yeah. seen that movie too, uh, <laughs> but um, I, why? I wonder what the reason was. You know, obviously checking up on you, or letting so. you know, letting you know, you know that you know that they're 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 still around. Yeah, yeah. I think that was kind of a a signal, a sign of we're still here, and we can take many forms. Um, I had. I don't discuss this. I, I I don't want to contaminate people's experiences. I don't want to put things in their head. So uh, I keep a lot of stuff to myself. Um, I did have uh, an encounter in 1995 in my bedroom in Sherman Oaks. Um, that's all I've ever said about the experience. Um, it lasted about 15 minutes. Yeah. And but there was no communication. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, um, but it was a stare down. And I wanted to go Bruce Lee. <laughs> yeah. I'm just telling I'm I'm being straight <laughs> up. Yeah. And 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 I couldn't. And when um I was finally able to like break free, I, I, I again I don't want to get into details. Yeah. There's things that I keep to myself, Denise. So when I interview somebody and they say something, I know, you know, if it's part, then I under, then I know it was a real experience because right. there are certain things that, that, that are the same or similar. But when I was able to break free and I was ready to jump up, wah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna get him. <laughs> yeah. he, was, he was gone. He was gone. Uh, and I, I and I and I, so I went up uh, and I want to get back to your last ET encounter, okay? Versus my own experience. Um, I had sliding glass doors in my bedroom, and I mm -hmm. went up, and they were still locked. I then went through the entire house, turned on all the lights, which I left the lights on for ten years, by the way. After that, well, yeah, not exaggerating. Yeah. And um, but but anyway, uh, I, there were no open doors or windows and I couldn't figure that part out how the entrance and exit. I didn't see it. OK, so I can't say he went through the ceiling, went through. He dematerialized. He teleported. I, no, I didn't. See, I didn't see any of that go down. How do you think your ET friend entered your house five years ago and in, into the room? 
through the wall, through whatever that in that room, there's only one small window. He may have, it was closed. It's locked permanently. Right. So yeah, just like they took me through the wall when I was two and a half to enter whatever type of room or craft that was um, by touching the wallpaper with an instrument that had a little light on the end. He touched that wallpaper holding my hand and we went right through. But I felt like I, again, like going in that beam, I was coming apart. What was that sensation like when you say coming apart? Like I was losing myself. I wanted to grasp it at who I was. I don't necessarily mean total physical being, this vessel that I'm in, but me, where was I spread out all over the place? Not as a two and a half year old. That didn't bother me when I was older and realized what was happening and how the orbs went from being an orb to an ET. That's how they took themselves up to the craft. They, um, uh, an orb like we see, an, uh, right? Uh, what color? Yeah, Blue. Blue. These ones were blue, yeah. Um, but the sensation of passing through something physical, uh, what was that like? Feeling like I could get trapped there. That, that right, I think, right. was a sensation. I'm going to get trapped. Let's get this over with and get where we're going. Yeah, you don't want to get stuck in drywall. <laughs> <laughs> no. You don't want to get, you don't want to get, um, I, um, if we go back to the Philadelphia experiment yeah. and, and the description of some of those sailors that were stuck in the middle of the steel yes. hull, yes. Uh, that, that always kind of freaked me out and you don't, um, that's why, you know, teleportation or, or any aspect like that where you're, What's the word I want to say? Your particles are going to yeah. be recreated somewhere else. Somewhere else. Yeah, I don't want to be that experiment. Yeah, um, it's a very strange, that I was afraid of, that I'm still afraid of. Um, but then I felt something similar in the near-death experiment. It was almost the same, um, a part of this whole place. Um, it was amazing. It's still amazing. And to see that glow off in the distance that they didn't say that was the source, but they indicated that was somewhere we couldn't go fresh out of a, a, a time on earth. Right, right, right. So you're, ex okay. So let me ask you this. We've only got like a minute left. Um, <laughs> but do you, when you are on the craft, are you on the craft? Most of the are in the physical, yeah, right, right, right. So how do you get from here to there? From here to there, that's that beam. Now, occasionally, I walked onto a craft, it depended right. on what type of craft it was, but that darn beam that would come down and the ET would switch into these little orbs, would be floating, I could see them in there and i knew i was not in one piece i knew that i didn't have arms legs couldn't see that and i was moving up the beam that's crazy was it yeah <laughs> yeah was it fun no that was not fun no, no. not enjoyable not enjoyable fascinating sure but no, it wasn't enjoyable. Well, it's not in you. You're not in, in, in control. Not at all. No, you can't say no. Just happens. And I don't recall ever being brought back. I cannot tell you one instance, except for one time they dumped me in the park where my grammar school was. No one's doors, windows were locked. So I just walked home, went upstairs and went to bed. That's the only time I remember being brought back. And uh, when when you come back, oh, we're out of time. Okay, just real quick, just real quick. Are you brought back as an orb? No, that time I wasn't. I was standing there in my pajamas, a little but, kid. But the other 49 contact uh, uh, time, are you brought back as an orb? or you? Just I don't know. Wow, wow. I don't know. That's something I need to explore. Maybe I can get Kathleen to take a look at it with me.
Kathleen, you got some work to do, young lady. <laughs> Denise, uh, thank you so much. Give my best to Edward to tell him. Tell him he's making the right moves. I have, I have, oh, I'm going to. <laughs> Denise, thank you so much, and I so look forward to our next conversation. Uh, be safe out there. And now, how can everybody reach out to you? I am at DM Stoner, the number one at gmail.com. Simple enough. All right. All right. Everybody, thank you. Uh, Denise, what a, what a great conversation. Give my best to Kathleen. I will. I will. And, she and, says uh, you're the best out there. She told me that today. She, she has she has no idea. Um okay, okay. I've got six I've got 45 seconds left. Um <laughs> one of my favorite moments. Um I can't remember exactly where we were, but we were like in a green room uh with a bunch of other you know, anyway. So I I I, I walk there's a couch and Kathleen's sitting on the couch by herself. Uh, and and uh, everybody was there. I think Stanton was there yeah. you know, and, and so forth. Anyway, she goes, Jimmy, take a seat. <laughs> All right. And, and, and Kathleen and I sat on that couch and we talked for about two hours, um, yeah. one-on-one, back and forth. And it is one of my favorite moments of my life. And she knows exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. And it was just a, a great conversation. I have such immense respect uh, for her. Oh, gosh, I do, too. She's, She's a genius, part. too. Just Wait, when she looks at you and starts talking, oh, you pay attention. That's you all. Do. <laughs> you <pay> you attention. <laughs> do. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Denise, Denise, enjoy the rest of your night. Give my best to Kathleen. And I, will. I look forward to your next time on oh, Facebook. Thank you. Please thank have me again. Thank you. Thank you so much. The absolute very best. Denise Stoner, everybody. And uh, with that, I'm going to get out of here. Tomorrow night uh, here on Fade to Black, we've got uh, Pete Kelsey is on with us. And uh, tomorrow night, we're going to be talking about Skinwalker Ranch. That's right. Fade to Black. What a great week we've got coming up on the show. I want to thank Denise Stoner. Perfect conversation tonight. Fade to Black is produced by Hilton J. Paul, Renee Newman, and Michelle Freed. Thank you to Dennis and Kevin. Webmaster is Drew the Geek Music, Doug Aldrich. Intro, Spaceboy, spaceboymusic.com. Fade to Black is produced by KJCR for the Game Changer Network. This broadcast is owned and copyrighted 2023 by Fade to Black and the Game Changer Network, Inc. It cannot be rebroadcast, downloaded, copied, or used anywhere in the known universe without written permission from Fade to Black and the Game Changer Network. Until tomorrow night with Pete Kelsey, our host Jimmy Church, I want you to be safe. Go back, Lee Tappy.